Welcome to another edition of the Apocalypse Report. My name is Robert King. The word apocalypse is taken from the Greek word meaning the unveiling or revelation. In fact, the last book of the Bible is called in Greek Apocalypsis. So the book of Revelation has to do with the unveiling of Jesus Christ in his kingdom and all of God's judgments associated with that. One particular aspect of the unveiling of Christ has to do with the exposure or the revealing of a man of lawlessness who is sitting within the temple of the God. In his second letter to the Thessalonians in the second chapter, the Apostle Paul referred to this man of lawlessness. And in fact, that entire second chapter is pretty much devoted to discussing this man of lawlessness. Paul was issuing a warning to Christians who would be living immediately before the unveiling, and he warned them not to be quickly shaken from their reason. Perhaps if they heard an inspired expression or through a verbal message or a written letter as if it were from the apostles themselves announcing that the presence had begun and the day of Jehovah was here. Paul said, do not let anyone seduce you in any manner because the per presence, parousia, will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, gets revealed. Well, in Paul's day, there certainly was a move towards this apostasy. In fact, there was a small sect of people that were saying that the resurrection had already begun, which is a significant feature of what is to occur during Jesus' presence. And Paul said that those who were teaching that the resurrection had already begun were subverting the faith of some. But Paul said until he who is acting as a restraint gets to be out of the way, uh, this man of lawlessness would be held in, in restraint. And so apparently that was the apostles. And of course, after the apostles died off, we know what happened to Christianity. It was hijacked. It became completely corrupt in about the third century, Constantine, you know, had all the bishops come to Nicaea, and he pretty much uh, became the head of what passed for the Christian congregation. Whereas the Roman Empire used to persecute Christians, now it, it was running the whole show, you might say. And for centuries, of course, Christendom has betrayed God with their pagan doctrines, and has really been an enemy of the truth. And when you realize that the Catholic Church has fought bitterly to keep the common people from understanding the Bible, tried to keep it locked in a dead language. And for those brave souls who dared to translate a Bible into the common language, it persecuted them some to death. Of course, the invention of the printing press pretty much turned the tide. The first book off the printing press was the Bible. And it came about that they could print Bibles faster than the priests could burn them. And so the clergy said, okay, we'll give you a Bible. And, you know, the Catholics came out with their Douay. And uh, the Church of England came out with their authorized King James Version, what, 1511. But the persecution didn't stop there. At any rate, we, we appreciate from the scriptures that Immediately before Jesus is to return, there will be a revival of the truth. Christianity has become corrupt, just as Israel became corrupt with its idolatry and paganism. In fact, at the time that King Josiah arose to the throne, he had the temple cleansed. It had been dilapidated and abandoned and uh, the high places sprung up where people went to worship, and so uh, the truth was concealed. But as they were cleansing the temple, someone found a copy of the original law. And this was quite a revelation, apparently, and Josiah had the law read to him. And as a consequence, he held a great Passover, the likes of which had never occurred in all of Israel. 
So it was a restoration of the worship that Jehovah established through Moses. That's similar to what has occurred with the Watchtower Society. For centuries, the Bible had been obscured, but with the coming of Charles Russell and his small group of Bible students, the original truth began to shine forth again. And you might say a great Passover has been held, uh, meaning the Lord's evening meal. So uh, another appearance, a grouping of anointed ones have appeared on the earth this past century. But Paul said the apostasy must come first. Was he referring to the apostasy that came to fruition with Constantine? Well, that wouldn't be much of a road marker, would it? The apostasy must come first and a man of lawlessness be revealed. According to Paul, the manifestation of Jesus would expose this man of lawlessness and destroy him. Now, the Watchtower says, of course, the clergy are this man of lawlessness. And apparently they think that they have done the exposing of this man of lawlessness through their Watchtower publications. Well, consider this. The man of lawlessness, as I had mentioned, sits down in the temple of the God, declaring himself to be a God. Now, the Watchtower well knows that the temple, the spiritual temple, is in reference to the congregation of Jesus. And all anointed members are part of that temple. Well, the Watchtower says the clergy claim to be part of this temple, spiritual temple of God. They claim to be in this spiritual temple. But that's not what Paul said. He said the man of lawlessness sits down in the temple of God. Another interesting clue as to uh, the identity of this man of lawlessness is the fact that Paul referred to him as the son of destruction. The only other reference in the Bible to that term, the son of destruction, is in the gospel. Jesus Christ referred to Judas as the son of destruction. That's not to say that Judas is this man of lawlessness. He was long gone before Paul issued this prophecy. But the interesting connection is that Judas was an intimate associate of Jesus Christ. He was one of the 12 hand-picked apostles. And of course, he betrayed Jesus. On the Passover night, it says, Satan entered into him. So, this man of lawlessness, who is also referred to as a son of destruction, must be an intimate associate within Christ's congregation. An important individual or grouping of individuals. But this message that Paul referred to, saying, do not be quickly shaken from your reason, it emanates from this man of lawlessness declaring that the presence has begun. Go back to Jesus' prophecy about the conclusion of the system of things. He emphasized over and over the need to be alert and to not be deceived. Many will come on the basis of my name. Jesus said, do not be misled. There will come those saying the due time has approached. Well... <laughs> Isn't that the message of the Watchtower? The due time is approached. That's been their message for over a hundred years. Have Jehovah's Witnesses been shaken from their reason as Paul advised us not to be? Well, we'd have to say yes, if we're honest. If you have ever read Macmillan's book, it wasn't published by the Society, but he was one of the officers in the Watchtower back in 1914 and all the turmoil that went on. and His book is entitled Faith on the March. And he, he related that he, personally, he was a very humble man apparently, he and some of the other brothers were so confident that God's kingdom was going to rapture them up and they were going to be gathered together to Christ, like Paul said, do not be quickly shaken from your reason as, as regards the presence and our being gathered together to him. 
old brother Mac and some others sold their winter clothes in the summer of 1914, thinking by the winter of 1914 uh, they would be gathered together. Well, apparently they had to buy some new winter clothes. What about Jehovah's Witnesses in more recent times? 1975? Some 30-some years ago, the Watchtower had built this anticipation that 1975 was going to be the day of Jehovah. And a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses were shaken from their reason, sold their homes, quit their jobs. That in itself is, is a noble thing. You know, Christ told his followers to leave all behind and go preach. But in this instance, it was done because of the feeling of the imminence of the day of Jehovah, because of what the Watchtower taught through their verbal messages at conventions, through written apostolic-like letters in the Watchtower magazine. And so a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses, consequently, were stumbled and are still being stumbled as a shakeout from that. So here is, here, here's the, the paradox. Jehovah's people know the truth, but are under this influence of this man of lawlessness who is promoting a fake parousia. And it's accompanied by Satan with every powerful work and lying sign and portent. What's the point? Satan wants to deceive us into thinking the parousia has begun, just as in the first century. Some were teaching the resurrection has already begun. Well, the Watchtower teaches <laughs> the resurrection has already begun. They say it began in 1918, invisibly, of course. So the reason God allows this, Paul went on to explain that it is an operation of air that God allows to go forth to those that they may get to believing the lie because they took pleasure in unrighteousness and did not accept the love of the truth. If we're to love the truth, we would have to know the truth, right? Jehovah's Witnesses know the truth. The truth, the doctrinal truth about Jehovah and his relationship with Jesus. We know what the kingdom is going to do. We know what God's purpose is for the earth and all of that. Jehovah's Witnesses know the truth, but they also have accepted this operation of error. And I should point out, well, Jehovah's Witnesses will be quick to say, well, no, no, we have all the prophecies, World War I, you know, nation rose against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and food shortages. But what did Paul warn? That Satan with, would use all of his wicked power to create this false sign to convince us that the presence has already begun. That's exactly what the Watchtower has done. So this man of lawlessness is an element within the Watchtower Society itself. And it has to have had been there from the beginning. So it can't be a, an individual, but a grouping. There has been rumors to the effect that Charles Russell was a Mason. And certainly there, there is evidence in the early Watchtowers that there were Mace, Masonic influence upon those early Bible students. Now, Russell said he wasn't a Mason. You know, perhaps he was under the influence, though, of some in his intimate association. Because it is the intention of the Masons, who are associated with the crown, to infiltrate political and religious organizations, to steer it for their own ends. More than likely, that explains the presence of this man of lawlessness. Well, what about the apostasy that comes first? Well, this October will mark the 10th year since the Watchtower dissolved their NGO partnership with the United Nations. And for 10 years prior to that, the Watchtower had been in what the United Nations itself calls a political partnership. 
all NGOs who are accepted into whatever level, associate or a consultative level, the, the Watchtower happened to be an associate level NGO, one of the lower ranking, but it was still incumbent upon them to carry political propaganda in behalf of the United Nations, to use a portion of their resources to reach the public with positive information about the United Nations. Well, for decades, the Watchtower has condemned the churches of Christendom for their political alliance with various uh, nation, political governments, as well, particularly, the United Nations. So what the Watchtower did is, according to their own writings, it's apostasy. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses may object to that, but the facts are there. In fact, when this, uh, it's interesting, you know, this was just a month after 9-11. That's when The Guardian came out with this news article about uh, the Watchtower's association with the UN. So I think it probably would have had a much bigger impact throughout the uh, media had, you know, the reverberations of 9-11 not been going on. And, and they were gearing up for the invasion of Afghanistan. The f financial markets were about ready to collapse, as they are now. <laughs> we're back where we were 10 years ago. So the, this news story uh, sort of went by the wayside. Although hundreds of Jehovah's Witnesses uh, read it on the internet, apparently, and they began writing to the Watchtower and calling. And the Watchtower came out and said, no, 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 we, we just uh, became an NGO so we could gain access to the UN's library. It's just a bunch of opposers who are stirring up all this stuff. And that, my friends, is a lie. At the time, it was not necessary to become an NGO to gain ac access to the UN library. If you were a researcher, you could, you could go in. Now it is necessary, but that's because of 9-11, ironically. At any rate, there are other uh, aspects of this Watchtower's apostasy. So the evidence is there. Jehovah's Witnesses have been entrusted with the truth. There as a restoration of original primitive Christianity. Jehovah is accomplishing his purpose through them. Yet at the same time, there is this man of lawlessness in the midst of the organization. And he has sort of a trap set up for us by convincing Jehovah's Witnesses that the presence is, has already begun. What do you suppose will take place when the authentic presence begins? It will be an enormous test of faith. The Watchtower has inculcated in Jehovah's Witnesses this mindset that they are the sole explainers of the Word of God, and they are the channel. Well, how will, you, how will Jehovah's Witnesses feel when it comes to light that, the, you know, this, there's a huge disconnect here? And I'm talking about in the future, the signs that Jesus, or that Jehovah's Witnesses think have been fulfilled in 1914 are presented in a much more convincing way. Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, food shortages, earthquakes. And we're, we're on the verge of that. We're on the verge of a global financial collapse that will bring civilization to its knees. They're gearing up for war with China and Russia. Don't be fooled. That's what's going on with the Middle East. They're ringing with military bases, ringing around the nations. Well, first comes Syria and then Iran with the ultimate goal of taking down China and, and Russia and establishing a one world government. That's what's happening. Meanwhile, Jehovah's Witnesses have been led to believe that all prophecy has been fulfilled and all that we're waiting for is for the United Nations to destroy organized religion. Meanwhile, look what's happening in the world. And the Watchtower doesn't have anything to say about it. They say the time of the end began in 1914. Well, if that's true, according to Daniel, the, the scroll of Daniel will be opened up during the time of the end. Yet, according to the Watchtower, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, they have no idea who the King of the North is, and it's wise not to speculate. That's what they say. So for 20 years, they haven't had one word to say about this significant aspect of prophecy, even though they say we're in the time of the end. So at some point, 
I'm not advocating a, a rebellion or an exodus from the watchtower, but pointing forward to the presence of Christ. And at that time, it will be necessary for Jehovah's Witnesses to come to grips with the fact that they've been misled by the very institution that has taught them the truth. So the point from Jehovah's standpoint, we'll have to demonstrate our faith in a way that we have not up to this time. Because the Watchtower has made it easy, haven't they? They've, they've laid it all out for you. You know, you go to meetings and here's the material you'll be studying and you underline the answers and raise your hand. And here's a little group we're going to go out in service and here you can get in this car group and we'll, we'll take you out door to door and we'll give you somebody to work with. And here's a little sermon to say to the householder and, and all of that. It's all laid out. And, you know, you can pretty much sleepwalk through the whole thing. So Jehovah is going to require a test to see if you really love the truth. And that will come about at the authentic presence of Jesus Christ and the discrediting and collapse of the Watchtower Society. Thank you for watching this edition of the Apocalypse Report.